Hi, welcome doctors to another episode of Holistic Professional Success. And today is a very special day. We have someone that's very hard to, to get in contact with. It's a treat to be able to spend time with him. Uh, probably one of the world's leading experts that we have living right now on so many different subjects. And uh, it's a great honor to travel the nation with him over the last few years. And we're gonna be talking today with Dr. Mark Harris. And Dr. Harris, uh, PhD three times over and many other accolades and degrees. But the thing that, that is exciting and that we're gonna be talking about today is the special talks that he's prepared for the Brimhall homecoming in January. And we're just gonna talk a little bit about him, tease a little bit if you would, in order to help you see the importance of coming to spend some time with us in Arizona. It's going to be four days, uh, January 7th through the 10th. That uh, is going to be so exciting. It's our favorite seminar of the year because we get to enjoy each other, but also hear other speakers. It's not just Dr. Harris speaking. He gets to hear other speakers and we get to enjoy each other at the same time. So it's a great time. But without further ado, let's go ahead and bring on Dr. Harris. Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you so much, Doug. Good to see you. And uh, we got some good stuff going on this year. Probably my favorite seminar to speak at. Uh, so. Thanks. It, it is because, you know, we the methylation seminar is so important. And, and I'm really excited about coming up in Florida with the methylation too. And those are just great things. But to be able to have you just, uh, for lack of a better word, be unleashed to say, what would you like to talk about? What's new in the literature you've been searching through lately and stuff? And it's just always a treat because we don't know what we're going to get oh, and it ends up being cool. life changing. So, so it's real exciting for us. Okay. Some of these will be, um, one thing will be sound very familiar, but it really isn't. And one will be perhaps a bit new. So first thing I'd like to talk about is the glial cells of the brain. Now, glial cells, there are many of them, but the primary ones are astrocytes. And astrocytes were thought to form the blood-brain barrier, but now we know they don't. They just kind of um, create nutrients that flow through to the brain. Then oligodendrocytes, um, which are really the things that make the myelin sheaths around the central nervous system. Microglia, which we'll talk about more in a minute. And there's a couple of others called epididymal, which help make the cerebral spinal fluid and satellite cells. Um, and then we have in the peripheral nervous system, Schwann cells, which make the myelin sheets for the peripheral nerves. But microglia are what we're going to talk mostly about. And these things comprise 10 to 15% of all the cells in the brain. Now they were thought to be brain cells originally, but these things form very early in our gestation and they persist throughout our entire life. So the original thinking was, as our brains are forming, we're creating all kinds of connections, but we make more than we need. And that seems like a good thing, but it really isn't. Because if we have too many, the brains don't work. So what the microglia do is prune back the things we don't need um, for the 20 to 25 years it takes for our brains to fully develop. So for many years, that was thought to be what the microglia do. And then it was um, thought that the brain is pretty much protected from the immune system because of the blood brain barrier, but it turned out the microglia are part of the brain's immune system, not really glial cells at all. But then we found that Whenever things go wrong with the brain, the microglia kind of clean up and were thought to be the brain's trash collection system. Not the most glorious of jobs, but, but it turns out like other immune system cells, they don't always do what they're supposed to. So they can start to do things that go wrong. And there are many different triggers. Now stress alone, and most people are living with lots of stress. Stress can trigger the microglia to do bad things. So can a poor diet. So can a whack on the head and all kinds of things. And so can not particularly good oxygen content. So let's talk about oxygen for a little bit because we all think we know a lot about it. It's depending on where you live. 21% of the air. If you live in a big city, maybe 16%. But what can affect oxygen? Well, if we have a heart problem, maybe congestive heart failure or something in that ilk, 
or anything with the heart, we can get less oxygen flowing to our cells. We can have a problem with our arteries because that's what takes our blood to our cells. And how about our blood cells? If you take a hematocrit and your hemoglobin's low, you can be anemic and not get enough oxygen. And then when there's not enough oxygen, there's this enzyme called hypoxia inducible factor. This starts getting triggered in the cells. And this can also trigger microglia because if there's not enough oxygen, things are gonna to start to go bad and the microglia, we're supposed to clean up the cells, but they can actually start damaging the cells also, just like an autoimmune disease can damage other things in your body. So when we think about carbon, di uh, carbon dioxide, well, we think of global warming first, but when we eat something, be it whatever it is, we metabolize all that food eventually into our mitochondria, and we have two byproducts, the two byproducts of um, metabolism, and those are carbon dioxide and water. And then what we all learned in medical school is that carbon dioxide is taken out and we exhale it, and then plants take it up, they release oxygen, and it all works so very well. Well, that's not the end of the story. Now, carbon dioxide, if you delve into the physiology of the body, we actually have carbon dioxide receptors. And then we learn in medical school, we take oxygen physiology is that hemoglobin binds up four oxygen molecules per hemoglobin. And you can have 300 million hemoglobin per red blood cell. So there's an awful lot of oxygen that can be carried. And then depending on when you get toward a cell, there's less oxygen in the blood vessel. So then the hemoglobin releases an oxygen and that changes the configuration and it releases another one and maybe a third, but then it picks up CO2 and leaves the cell. But that's not which way what's happening now. What happens really is carbon dioxide has a chemical reaction where there's carbon dioxide and a, hydrox and, a, and a hydrogen atom, or we call a proton, hydrogen with a positive cell. And these actually start to bind to the hemoglobin. And when they do, it releases oxygen. Now we're more familiar with carbon monoxide doing this. It binds better than oxygen does, but that's enough to kill you. But this is not carbon monoxide, this is carbon dioxide. So in areas of low oxygen, like when it's giving it up to the cells, carbon dioxide binds, and then it gives up the oxygen. And then as it gets to an area of high oxygen, like the lung, then it gives up the CO2. But this can be up to 40% of oxygen into our cells is from carbon dioxide working inside the cell. And if we didn't have that, we really wouldn't have a chance of living at all. But if you have low lung function, if you have low, if you have blockage in your arteries, or if you don't have enough nitric oxide and carbon dioxide does similar things to nitric oxide where it increases the size of blood vessels. So this stuff gets kind of important. And then if it's off, we get hypoxia inducible factor and microglia start doing bad things in our cells. But what do they do? Well, that's kind of a big topic and we got two hours of it coming up in Arizona. And then what can we do to do the best for our carbon dioxide system? We're gonna go over all that too, because that's pretty complex stuff, but not too complex. So we're gonna go over how to do it. We're actually gonna do some together. But basically microglia, are now thought to be the lymphatic system of the brain. And we come up with a new term, the glymphatic system, <laughs> the lymphatic system of the brain. So the glymphatic system, we're gonna go over that in a lot of detail too. And it's got one of those terms I just love, a little simple combination of terms, kind of like when two celebrities get together and they combine their names. <laughs> but the glial cells of the brain a microglia, and they're now not to be known microglia, but they're actually lymphatic cells in this lymphatic system of the brain. Wow. But like all, lymphat all, the, all the lymphatic cells, 
be it a white blood cell, be it an immune system cell, they're not always doing the right thing. Just like you can get an autoimmune disease, you can get a microglia immune reaction. Wow. But that's kind of, we're gonna go over that in a bunch of detail. And then the more important thing, what to do about it. But that's a kind of a larger topic than we have time to go into today. <laughs> and then one of the things we can do also is have proper oxygenation. And it's not all about carbon dioxide because we mentioned nitric oxide too. Those both have to be working really well. That's and I awesome. just saw this one ad came on. I was watching a YouTube video and it talked about this supplement called Redwood of all the odd things. It's called a, it's called a nitric oxide supplement. So I looked at all the ingredients. There's not a single thing in there that would do anything at all for nitric oxide. So, but you can buy it for 70 bucks that'll last you a month and it will do absolutely nothing because the formula is ridiculous. Yeah. And they have a little system. You can finally find the ingredients, which many websites don't, but I looked at them and to think they would do anything for nitric oxide is absolutely absurd, but we have things that can and do. And we'll talk about all those as we talk about microglia health and how carbon dioxide not only for microglia, but for oxygenation, all plays into that. Well, that's awesome. Well, you know, what's interesting is I was talking to Dr. Brimhall about your talks and your topics, and we're like, okay, microglia, carbon dioxide, autonomic nervous system, you know, how do they all fit together? And boy, that's just exciting what you've told us. And I hope that the doctors are understanding that. Dr. Harris is going to be speaking Friday, um, from 1030 to 12, a mouth of microglia and going into details in that and what we now know as a glymphatic uh, system. And then on Saturday at 1030, talking about carbon dioxide, seeing how that synergistically works hand in hand, understanding the microglia going into carbon dioxide. And, and then we're also mentioned- going to show a way to figure out what your individual carbon dioxide level is right there in the, in the middle of the seminar. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you're going to not just be talk, talk about it, learn about it. You're going to learn how to determine that. And yes. then two hours worth of autonomic nervous system later on that night. So gosh, for no other reason to come hear this great new information about the microglia, the lymphatic or glymphatic system, how it relates to carbon dioxide, the autonomic nervous system. But as Dr. Harris said, not just learning about it, learning how to test for it, what nutrients to give, treatments to give for these things, um, that in itself is worth its weight in gold. And I'm excited to hear about it. I know Dr. Brimhall is listening and, and he's excited to set an audience uh, with me to listen to you and all the other great speakers that are coming. Um, man, it, it's just going to be exciting. And I'll tell you, Dr. Harris, I just got back from the board. We're having this Arizona Grand Resort. They guaranteed that we're going to be able to be there. In fact, they're right now making a um, a bubble for a couple NCAA basketball teams in the exact room we're going to be in the grand ballroom that they're going to play over the next week or two because it's the only well, place. They don't knock us with basketballs while we're there. <laughs> yeah, there, yeah, there's a private resort. So the bottom line is it's happening and we know we're going to be doing it and we're excited for it. So please commit to come right now. Uh, Dr. Harris, these talks are, are just, the neat thing is it's not the same old thing. It's new research. It's it's not just the research, it's the testing. It's not just the testing, it's what to do about it in your clinic. You're gonna get all that information at the Brim Hall. All Hall fully referenced, like I do most of all program. my lectures, fully referenced. And Dr. Harris, anything else uh, you'd like to men- mention to the doctors for uh, reasoning to get them to want to sign up right now and come? Well, there's just one more thing. Um, to give for many years, we've been doing it at a different place. It was kind of a bit in need of a renovation, but we're at a place this time that is the seminar site is spectacular. They got a water park. The rooms are gorgeous because we did one here in June um, and they told us the first one in months, but this place is, they got great rooms. They got great facilities and I'm just excited to go back to this place. And it's uh, not only that, but we're going to have life changing information for not only our doctors attending, but for all of our patients being there also. Um, and our doc, our doctors patients as well, a way to evaluate them in office, with no equipment purchase whatsoever. Nice. So That's this will awesome. be, uh, this will be um, I think just some of the best information because this is cutting edge because even some of the glial cells out there like radial cells and satellite cells, the literature is not even sure what they do, but just for a bit of update, 
radial cells create, help create stem cells in the brain and satellite cells help the Schwann cells to make myelin sheaths. Mm -hmm. But if you start looking, you won't find much unless you take a deep dive into the literature as I'm doing to give you all this great information. Wow, well, that, that's enough for me. I'm excited. I hope doctors, <laughs> you're excited. Um, right now, go ahead and go on brainwallhomecoming.com or call the 1-800 number that's on the screen. And uh, please sign up to come. The only thing we don't know about the seminar is how many people are clinics, above 200 clinics we're going to allow, that they're going to allow to be there. So we know we're going to have at least 200 clinics. So sign up now. Dr. Harris, thanks so much for taking your valuable, valuable time with us today. Uh, it's my pleasure. To seeing you in Florida. I'm presenting this and can't wait Arizona. to see people. That's awesome. Well, thanks again. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll talk soon. Remember, keep chewing. <laughs>